to Primetime Guitar and our newest series, Lead Guitar 101. This series is dedicated to the people that's been playing rhythm guitar for a long time and they're trying to jump and make the transition from rhythm to lead guitar. This series is going to have a lot of music theory, how music is made, um, scales, application of those scales, licks, um, situational playing, and a lot of lead guitar philosophy, which is how we think about playing lead guitar, how we think about our approaches and things like that. It's going to be a really great series, so let's just go ahead and get started with this first video. So to start this thing off, I want to start this off with a question, and yes, I know, less talking, more playing, and I promise we'll get there. But I'm going to start you off with this question because I feel that it's important. Um, what is our role in the band as a lead guitar player? What do we do? Why are we there on the stage with the rest of the band? What is our purpose? Well, our purpose, obviously, is to be badasses, right? That's what we're there for. But in order to achieve a level of said badassery, um, we have to bring something to the table. Um, so what we do is, obviously, we, we impact the song um, kind of on an emotional level. That's kind of how you have to really look at it. Um, we have to add feeling and emotion to the song. As the song climbs like a roller coaster, our playing should be climbing with that. And as it falls, we should start playing less and backing out. You know, we have to be adding to the song. That's, that's our whole deal is to embellish this song that is already great and we have to make it better. So that's our whole deal. I feel that was important to go over because um, if you have no idea what you're trying to accomplish, there's no way you can execute it. You don't know the steps. Um, then you're just lost in the woods trying to find your way out. So I felt like that that was a good thing for us to address right off the bat. So let's right, get started. So what we're going to be going over t in this lesson are the four octave shapes of the minor pentatonic scale based on the caged system. Now, I'm not going to harp too much on the caged system. I will put a link in the description of this video that explains it very, very well. But I will give you the fly-by-night course here. Um, it's scale shapes and arpeggio shapes based off of uh, octaves octave shapes of the chords, open chords C, uh, A, G, E, and D. So the first octave shape is going to be the C chord. Second octave shape is going to be based off this uh, A bar chord. Third octave shape is going to be based off this G chord. Fourth octave shape is going to be based off this open E. And the fifth and final octave shape is going to be based off the D. All right, like I said, I'm going to be showing you the pentatonic scale. And what a scale really is, if you don't know what a scale is, I'll just say I like to compare it to a food buffet. I like food. Um, and it's everything on the buffet that you have to choose from. Um, there might be stuff in that buffet that you don't like and you avoid. That's totally okay. There might be stuff in that buffet that you love and you go to and that's the only thing you get at that buffet. But the notes in a scale are choices and a buffet. That's the best way to look at the scales, and I'm gonna be showing you the four octave shapes that cover the entire neck of the guitar of the minor pentatonic scale. I'm gonna get you all started soloing over the blues. Can you dig it? It's gonna be awesome. Let's get started. Also, a little side note, um, the reason I'm calling these shapes is because they're movable. So if your root note is here on an A, and we're playing in the cage system octave shape four, would be this. Uh, say the next song's in D and you want to use the same minor pentatonic scale. Um, you can just find your root note D on this and you want to use the same shape. Um, find your root note D, which would be up here at the 10th fret, and play the exact same shape. And you can move them around like that. So that's why this is really beneficial to learn these shapes and muscle memorizing because they're not only the same for the key of A, they're the same for every key, uh, as long as you can find your root note. All right, so here's the the first shape of your, where all these are going to be in the key of A minor. Here's the first shape. It's based off the G chord in the cage system. Um, starting with your pinky finger on the fifth fret of the thick E string. Then your middle finger at the third fret of the A string. Then your pinky at the fifth fret of the A string. 
then your index finger at the second fret of the D string, your pinky finger at the fifth fret of the D string, your index finger at the second fret of the G string, your pinky finger at the fifth fret of the G string, your middle finger at the third fret of the B string, your pinky finger at the fifth fret of the B string, your middle finger at the third fret of the E string, and your pinky finger at the fifth fret of the high E. And going down, it's your pinky finger at the fifth fret of the high E, your middle finger at the third fret of the high E, your pinky finger at the fifth fret of the B string, your middle finger at the third fret of the B string, your pinky finger at the fifth fret of the G string, your index finger at the second fret of the G string, your pinky finger at the fifth fret of the D string, your index finger at the second fret of the D string, your pinky finger at the fifth fret of the A string, your middle finger at the third fret of the A string, sorry, and your pinky finger at the fifth fret of the thick E string, and your middle finger at the third fret of the low E string, and then back to the fifth fret of the low E string to your A note. And that scale played somewhat normal tempo sounds like this. You can tell that's where you get your blues from. Alright, this next shape is your bread and butter shape. <laughs> this is the one that everybody learns first. Um, it's based off the fourth octave shape in the cage system, based off that open E chord. Um, we're in the key of A here, so it's going to start with your index finger on the fifth fret of the low E string, then your pinky finger on the eighth fret of the low E string, your index finger on the fifth fret of the A string, your ring finger on the seventh fret of the A string, your index finger on the fifth fret of the A string, your ring finger on the seventh fret of the A string, your index finger on the fifth fret of the G string, your ring finger on the seventh fret of the G string, your index finger on the fifth fret of the B string, your pinky finger on the eighth fret of the B string, your index finger on the fifth fret of the E string, and your pinky at the eighth fret of the high E string. Going back as your pinky is at the eighth fret on the high E, releasing to your index finger at the fifth fret, pinky finger at the eighth fret on the B string, releasing to the index finger at the fifth fret of the B string, then your ring finger at the G string seventh fret, then your ring finger or your index finger at the fifth fret on the G string, then your ring finger on the D string seventh fret, then your index finger at the fifth fret of the D string, then your ring finger at the fifth or seventh fret of the A string, then your index finger at the fifth fret of the A string, then your pinky finger on the 8th fret of the low E, and your index finger at the 5th fret on the low E. And that right there is your bread and butter. That's, uh, that's what most people, you know, that's the first one that they learn. Alright, so let's move on to the next shape. Alright, this next shape is based off the 5th octave shape of the cage system. You're going to start with your index finger on the D string uh, at the 7th fret, then your pinky finger at the 10th fret on the D string. Then your index finger on the seventh fret of the G string. Then your ring finger on the ninth fret of the G string. Then your middle finger on the eighth fret of the B string. Then your pinky finger on the tenth fret of the B string. Then your middle finger on the tenth fret of the high E string. And your pinky finger on the um, on the tenth fret of the high E string. And then going back up, it's going to be. Uh, pinky finger at the 10th fret of the high E, then middle finger at the 8th fret on the high E, then pinky finger at the 10th fret on the B string, middle finger at the 8th fret of the B string, ring finger at the 9th fret on the G string, index finger at the 7th fret on the G string, pinky finger at the 10th fret on the D string, index finger at the 7th fret on the D string, pinky finger at the 10th fret on the A string, index finger on the 7th fret of the A string, um, pinky finger at the 10th fret on the low E, 
and index finger on the um, eighth fret of the low E, and then go back up with your pinky on the tenth fret. Then you're going to go index finger at the seventh fret of the A string, then the pinky at the tenth fret of the A string, and back to your A note on the D string, seventh fret. And that sounds like this. Alright, on to the next shape. Alright, now we're at uh, octave shape one in the cage system. And we're going to be up here at the 12th fret on the A string, um, on your A note. You're going to use your ring finger of the 12th fret of the A string. Then your index finger on the 10th fret of the D string. Then your ring finger on the 12th fret of the D string. Then your index finger on the 9th fret of the G string. Then your ring finger on the, or your pinky finger on the 12th fret of the G string. Then your index finger, you're gonna have a shift using your index finger at the 10th fret of the B string. And your pinky finger at the 13th fret of the B string. And then you're going to use your index finger on the 10th fret of the high E string. And your ring finger at the 12th fret of the high E. Going back, you're going to go ring finger at the 12th fret of the high E to the index finger at the 10th fret, to your pinky on the B string at the 13th, to your index at the uh, 10th, shifting back with your pinky on the G string at the 12th fret, to your index finger at the 9th fret on the G string, to your pinky on the 12th fret of the D string, or I'm sorry, your ring finger 12th fret of the D string, then your index finger at the 10th fret of the D string, then your ring finger at the 12th fret of the A string, then your index finger at the 10th fret, and then your ring finger at the 12th fret of the low E, and then your index at the 10th fret of the low E, and then back to the 12th fret at the low E, then index finger at the 10th fret, and ring finger at the 12th fret. And that shape sounds like this. That is the BB King shape, by the way. He, loved, he lived down in this area with his blues. He loved it down in there. That's BB King's shape, for sure. All right, on to the next shape. All right, the final shape. This is going to be based off that A bar chord uh, in the cage system. It's going to be octave shape two in the cage system. Do your reading about that. It's pretty important. Um, I'll put that link in the description along with all the tabs to all these um, to all these scale shapes as well. All right. So starting the last shape, it's going to be your index finger on the twelfth fret of the A string, then your pinky finger on the fifteenth fret of the A string, then your index finger on the twelfth fret of the D string ring finger at the 14th fret of the D string, then your uh, index finger at the 12th fret of the G string, ring finger at the 12th fret of the G string, middle finger at the 11th fret of the, or yeah, 13th fret of the B string, I'm sorry, then pinky finger at the 15th fret of the B string, index finger at the 12th fret of the high E string, pinky finger at the 15th fret of the high E string. And going back up, pinky finger, 15th fret of the high E string, to the index finger, 12th fret of the high E string, pinky finger, 15th fret of the B string, middle finger, uh, 13th fret of the B string, ring finger, uh, 14th fret of the G string, 12th, and then 12th fret of the G string with your index, ring finger, 14th fret of the D, D string, index finger, 12th fret of the D string, Pinky finger, 15th fret of the A string. Uh, index finger, 12th fret of the A string. Pinky finger, 15th fret of the low E string. Index finger, 12th fret of the low E string. Back to the pinky at the 15th fret. And then finally, your index finger at the 12th fret of the A string. And this shape is like this. I'll play it slow, or play it at a tempo. All right. 
right, so I hope you've enjoyed this lesson so far. Um, next video, we're going to be talking more about the minor pentatonic scale, how it's made, uh, what it fits over, yada, yada, yada. But for now, I want you to really learn those shapes and get them muscle memorized in your hand and visually memor memorize them on the neck. Um, look up a backing track, or like a slow blues backing track on YouTube. The slower, the better. And while they're chunking away at the chords... <laughs> Just pick one of those shapes and just play the notes out of the shapes and just, well, as they're playing, just try to play along with them with the scale shape in time. Like if they're going, then go. And just try to do that back and forth. And once you get it muscle memorized, try to make some licks, try to play around with it, play what you hear in your head, try to play what you hear in your head. It's all great, it's all great to do that. Um, again, there will be a link to a description of the cage system in the description of this video. And also, I'll include tabs for all of these positions of the minor pentatonic scale as well. As always, keep practicing, keep jamming, tell your friends about Primetime Guitar, and if you haven't already, please hit subscribe.